Hi, I'm Ray Luzier. In this DVD, I'd like to share with you some of the methods and techniques that I use on a regular basis that have helped me in my drumming career. I'll go through some warm-up and motion exercises, some double bass grooves and fills, a few ostinato patterns, and some examples of four-way independence. And then later on I'll show you what that sounds like in a band situation. Now drumming is a never-ending but exciting learning process. It's up to you how much time you spend on practicing, getting better, playing with other musicians, and so forth. As you know, some things will be easy to grasp right away and some things will take a lot more work. Just remember that all our playing and learning abilities are all on different levels. Try not to get frustrated, be patient, and it will come to you. Think professionally at all times, keep an open mind, practice hard, get out and play, and your talents will eventually be recognized. My goal in this DVD, hopefully, is to inspire and to give you some new creative ideas, to enhance and better your playing, to share with you some of my experiences, and hopefully give you some advice that will take your drumming to a higher level. The most important thing is, is that you have fun. I hope you enjoy it. Now let's get started. Okay, what I was doing there was a series of several different rudiments, some roll exercises, and a few motion exercises. I'm a big fan of the 26 essential rudiments, and I think that everybody should learn them and apply them to your drumming. Uh, it makes it a lot more well-rounded, more 3D, and uh, you'll find out that your dynamics levels will change a lot, and it just makes you that much better of a, a professional drummer. Uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to take you to some accent exercises that I used in that brief example. And uh, we're going to start with the triplets. And how you count triplets, or you, there's several different ways. What I like to say is one and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. You can also say one ta ta, two ta ta, three ta ta, four ta ta. Whatever rolls off the tongue is okay. Um, so this first exercise, actually, it's going to take the one, and then the second ta, and then the third ta. And I'm going to pulse something. Always pulse something. Give yourself. Um, another independence exercise to do as you're playing these. Always give yourself you know, either a quarter note on a hi-hat uh, or the kick drum or both. Um, later on I'll be showing you some examples of how to uh, actually break it up, do eighth notes on the bass drum, quarter notes on the hat, and vice versa. So this first accent exercise is going to sound like this. Okay, now notice, I started on the right stick. When I got to the last accent, I switched to the left, okay? Um, the reason to do this, you have to want to equal everything out. You want to get the stick heights to a certain level, let's say maybe 8 to 10 inches. Keep the lower notes down about 3 to 5 inches. It's really important. When you, when you, it's, a, it's not a bad idea to get a mirror and watch yourself play in a mirror just for that perfect technique. When you're playing live, it's okay to have fun and be loose. But when you're doing these exercises, really focus in on your hands. Look at your technique. You're trying to get the best possible sound out of the drum. So uh, watch closely as I do this on the snare. I'm going to keep the low notes really low and the high notes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit them really hard. Sometimes I'll even hit a rim shot to really accentuate the accents, okay? So again, really slow that exercise.
Here's what it sounds like a little quicker. Okay, now let's get the kick drums involved in this. Same exact exercise. Now what we're going to do is actually put the right foot underneath the right hand, the left foot underneath the left hand. So, and of course, I always like to pulse something that just helps out your independence. So when we're on the right hand, we're going to pulse the left hand doing quarter notes and vice versa. Go to the ride cymbal or another cymbal when we're on the left hand left foot. Uh, this is going to really help build dexterity and stamina in your legs because you're concentrating, you're focusing on the hands, but your feet are actually automatically happening. Make sure you do them nice and slow and clean. Speed is not important again. Okay, so we put the kick drum right with the hand. Now let's separate them now. It's going to sound like this. Now you notice on that last example, I'm not accenting the kick drums. They're just going straight through the exercise. You're focusing on the hands, that's the whole point of it, is to actually build the stamina in your feet. A lot of people when they practice double bass, they like to just sit in a room for hours and just play nothing but kick drums and it gets very fatiguing. I like to do a lot of things with my hands over top of the kick drums and I'll show you some more advanced exercises you can do with the same triplet exercise. It sounds like this. In this last example, I'm going to put triplets on the kick drums around this accent pattern. It sounds like this. Now on that last and final exercise, make sure the triplets between your hands are nice and clean. It's way better to have a nice clean triplet sound than it is to have mud. You'll find out that your fills will become a lot cleaner the more precise you are with your practicing. Now on this next exercise, a lot of people will come up to me and say, wow, my left hand's really weak if you're right-handed or vice versa. If you're left-handed, the right hand's always weaker. These next exercises in the triplet form are really going to help that out a lot. Check this out. Now that exercise includes triplets as well. What I'm doing, the sticking is, is right, left, left, right, left, left. And what I'm doing is accenting the second left. So it's right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left. And there's something about the snap of the wrist on that that helps build your endurance for left hand. And of course, if you're left-handed, it's going to help build your right. Don't neglect your right altogether. When you do the exercise, make sure you're doing both as equal, like this. You could also try this exercise in a 16th note form. The sticking is going to go like this. Right, left, 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 right, left, left, left. So it's one E and uh, two E and uh. So the uh will get the accent now. 
One E and a, uh, two E and a, uh, three E and a, uh, four E and a. Uh. Sounds like this. Now these next series of accent exercises are going to be 16th note based. Now again, make sure you start really slow. 60 on a metronome is my preference. Get it to 150, 200 if you can. But the key thing is nice and clean, high accents, low notes. I'm going to play a series of them. This next series of 16th note patterns, I'm going to accent the one on the ride cymbal and the right foot, the E on the hi-hat and the left foot, the and on the ride cymbal right foot, and the uh on the left hi-hat and left foot. It's going to sound like this. Now I'm going to mix up that 16th note pattern, adding some kick drums and some various cymbals. You'll see the example written out. Now I'm going to show you what they sound like in a beat context. The accents are counted like this. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. So that's an even bar, but yet there's five note groupings over top of the sixteenths. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. Here's what it sounds like in a beat. Now I'd like to discuss the importance of double stroke rolls. What we're going to do is really dissect it and get them nice and clean. We're going to start doubling the one, then go to the E, the and, and then the a. Uh. And then I'll show you what it sounds like. We'll put a bunch of them together.
So I just showed you that exercise pulsing the quarter notes on the hi-hat and bass drum. Now for independence purposes, you can actually play eighth notes on the kick drum and maybe quarter notes on the hi-hat or reverse or even you put double bass underneath it and it sounds something like this. So there was another exercise that you can incorporate the kick drums in your feet underneath the snare accent. Now this next exercise is one of my favorites, it's called the Pyramid of Pain. And what this involves is actually doing straight line of 16th notes. The hands will never stop going 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a... What you're going to do is do a straight line of 16th notes and then you're going to roll for 4. Straight line of 16th notes, roll for 8. It sounds like this, 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a roll to three, four, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, roll, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Back to the sixteenth notes. And now you can climb in increments of four however high you want, however much your hands can take. Be careful when you do this, make sure you're properly warmed up. You don't want to just dive into this one. It's a pretty strenuous exercise, especially if you get into the hundreds. So I'm just going to play a small example. Maybe I'll pick the number 20 for now. So what I'll do is I'll keep playing this until I reach the, uh, the pyramid, which is 20, and then I'll start descending by increments of four until I get back to, down to one. The great thing about this pyramid of pain is now we can do this, we can focus on our hands, but now we're going to work our feet out underneath it. And it sounds like this. In this next section, I'd like to talk about some one hand, one foot rolls. And I'm a big fan of modulating note values, meaning I might go from eighth notes to sixteenth notes, back to eighth note triplets to sixteenth note triplets, and so forth. This exercise is very simple, just it involves one hand, one foot, but again, I'd like you to pulse something like a hi hat or a ride cymbal. So use a click track on these for sure because of the modulation. Sometimes it's easy to take off or slow down depending on what speed you're at.
To add to the one hand, one foot rolls, this next exercise includes going from the right hand, left foot, left hand, right foot, and creating a roll within itself. So actually you're going to be playing straight sixteenths on your hands and then straight sixteenths on the feet as well. In this next exercise, I'll do the same note values, but what I'll do is I'll put two on my hands, two on my feet. It sounds like this. Now let me show you a groove that includes these modulations in it. Now what I was playing there was a series of motion exercises. We've actually removed this symbol so I could show you a little bit more exactly what I'm doing. Now when you're playing live and you're rocking out and you're going for it and you're caught in the moment, a lot of times you might hit the side of the tom or even miss the drum altogether. So these exercises are really going to help you out. Take aim on what is on your kit, for what, first of all, whether it's a cymbal, a drum, a bell, anything. Knowing where everything's at at all times so your peripheral vision can always capture it and you're obviously looking right at it as well. But if you're looking at the bass player or guitar player, sometimes you have to you know, know exactly where things are at on your kit. So these exercises are really going to help us out. In this first motion exercise, we're going to descend in groups of fives, and it's going to look like this. One, two, three, four, five to the next tom. Now we're going to start with the second drum. One, two, three, four, five, we're at the floor tom. And now we're going to climb back up. One, two, three, four, five. Back up, one, two, three, four, five, and now we're back where we started from again. Again, one, two, three, four, five, 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 back to the beginning. Now let's elaborate on that a little bit. Let's add two strokes 
three strokes of the hands, and then four, and then let's start putting our kick drums in between that, like this. Now you can take that last exercise further by maybe going to seven or nine. It's going to look like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Back up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you're back to the beginning again. Now if you only have, a, a, depending on what, how many toms you have in your kit, like this is, I have four drums in front of me. You might only have a four-piece kit where you have one mounted and one floor. In that case, you can do the same exercise, you just have less drums to deal with. So now you go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and now you're back at the beginning. Now in this next exercise, we're going to start with the floor tom, work our way up to the snare, and then go back down. That's going to look like this. Now you can do some independence exercises on your feet while you're doing this, creating kind of like an ostinato pattern, where this is repetitive and it never stops. Your feet are the only thing changing. You can change up the patterns. Maybe you'll have a quarter notes on their hi-hat, maybe a dotted quarter note on the kick drum. You can intersperse things sporadically on the kick drums while you keep this pattern going. It sounds like this.
All right, check it out on this next motion exercise. We're going to incorporate this one in a groove. It has pretty intricate sticking, so see the booklet for the exact notation. And it goes like this. I'll start really slow, and then I'll speed it up and play it in a groove. Okay, that's the actual pattern in a triplet form. Now we can actually take the triplets and move them to 16th notes, 16th note triplets, or even 32nd notes. It sounds like this. I'll play several grooves and incorporate them modulating the note values. Of course you know I found a way to intersperse the kicks with this pattern. First of all it's triplets and then we're going to go to quads or four notes. It's going to sound like this. One of the patterns that I played at the top of this section interspersed toms with a backbeat on two and four on the snare, a kick groove, but I also kept quarter notes on the hi hat. So it's kind of tricky, but I'll break it down really slow and show you how it's played. Here it goes. This next exercise is really going to help out your balance and control. It's going to really test your skills with, from your hands to your feet. And what we're going to do is whatever we play on the snare, we're going to copy with the feet, kind of like a mirror image, but not really. You'll see what I mean. I'll explain it to you. I'm going to run through a succession of these, going from triplets to eighth notes to sixteenth notes. Now you, what you might want to do to start off is actually play in one hand and one foot just so you get the feel what the triplet feels like against the eighth note and vice versa. They sound like this.
Now in this next section, I'm going to show you some of my favorite Austin Auto patterns. Now basically what an Austin Auto is, is two or more limbs hitting together simultaneously and they never stop. So, and then you're free to do soloing with the other limbs. So this first ostinato involves what I call the square triangle effect. Now what I'm going to be doing with my right hand is actually considering I have this amount of drums in front of me, the one, two, three, four. I'm going to go down the right hand going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now on my left hand, I'm going to hit the exact same time, but I'm going to hit the snare, the high tom, and hi hat, creating a three against four effect. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now both hands are going to be hitting the exact same time, making this motion. But I will be hitting four with my right hand, three with my left. Now that leaves my feet wide open to solo and to do whatever I want against that. Now I can hear the beat in three, or I can hear it in four, or I can even go to successions of five. It's up to your mind how far you take it. It sounds like this. This next ostinato pattern deals with a group of 16th notes, one E and a, two E and a. The one and the E are going to be on the high tom, the and and the uh are going to be on the feet. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hit the hi-hat and left bass drum together and then hit the right foot for the uh. Now I want to show you some of my double bass fills. Now when you start these, start them very slow. Uh, you want to do them really slow and controlled. Speed is not important again. They do sound very cool when they're fast, but you want to make sure that you have a nice slow and controlled, uh, even amount of notes between the hands and the feet, nice separation. You want to avoid muddy sounding fills at all costs. Especially in the studio when you get, start recording, you'll notice if you listen to playback, your groove might be really happening and all of a sudden you get to the fill and it's mushy or muddy. 
slow things down, really take them, you know, 60, 70 on a metronome, and then speed them up. Speed is not important. Okay, so I'm gonna start very slow and basic on these fills, and then we'll work into a faster progression. And I'll even show you what they sound like in a band situation. Here they go.
in these next group of fills, a lot of them are triplet based. Now you can play triplet fills in a 16th note context, but they sound a lot better in a shuffle based groove or a double bass shuffle. This is how they sound.
Okay, now I'm going to play you a series of different double bass grooves that incorporate the 16th notes, 16th note triplets, uh, 16th note triplets that are actually broken up around the snare drum, creating a four-stroke rough effect, and some uh, actually some bars of 3-4 in there as well. And they sound like this. Okay, in this next exercise, what I'm playing is straight 16th notes, one E and uh, two E and uh, starting with the right foot. Now, what I like to do is insert a, a 16th note triplet in there. So, right before the snare drum, creating this four stroke rough effect. So, it's going to sound like one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and ta ta four E and uh. Okay, so the anta ta four, the four is actually hit with the snare drum. You don't have to hit the kick drum there. Let this bass go up. So your feet are actually playing one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and ta ta E and uh, one E and uh, so the snare is taking that fourth note.
This next example is a modulation exercise. And you can also incorporate double bass in it after a while. What I'm going to do, I'm going to start out pulsing the hi-hat to show you where exactly the time is and then how the time shifts to the next level. Now the process I'm using to modulate is I'll take a 16th note grouping, say four notes, and anything that falls within those four notes will speed up the tempo. For example, if I'm counting 1E e and a 2E e and a 3E e and a 4E e and a, say I'll take, I'll accent every third 16th note, so it'll sound like 1E e and a 2E e and a 3E e and a 4E e and a 1E e and a 2E e and a 3E e and a 4E e and a, right? So now, I'll use that on the ride cymbal. What I'll do is I'll play straight quarters on the hi-hat, straight kick and snare pattern, straight ride, and then I'll move the ride cymbal to every third 16th note. Then after I develop that, I'll add the kick and the snare with it, but I keep the hi-hat the exact same. And then once I establish the kick snare ride, I will change the hi-hat pattern. Now let's work on the double bass shuffle. Now when you think of the shuffle, obviously it's a triplet bass, so you're counting one ta ta, two ta ta, three ta ta, four ta ta. It's the first and last of every triplet, right? One ta ta, two ta ta, three ta ta, four ta ta, one ta ta, two ta ta, three. A lot of times when you're doing the triplets, they're sometimes mistaken for the 16th notes because there's a fine line in between that. Uh, shuffle and the 16th notes. So a good way to develop this, on, especially on the feet, is to play straight triplets on your hands and then put a shuffle on your feet and it sounds like this. Now let's take a very slow double bass shuffle groove, keeping the snare on two and four. Let's throw some ride variations over top of it. In this next example, I'm going to throw a ghost note on the second ta of the triplet. So one ta ta, two ta ta, three ta ta, four ta ta, kind of filling in the shuffle.
Now the combinations and possibilities of these exercises are endless. You can take them as far as you want to, just be creative with them. You notice at the end of this DVD, I did a lot of these combinations uh, with Billy and Toshi on the performance. Um, hopefully this will inspire you to take them to another level.
Okay, I had a great time playing all this stuff for you guys. Now it's up to you to see how far you can take it. I'll see you on the road. I hope to see you on the big stage someday and hope to buy your record. I should, except you give me a weird look. Yeah, I just... <laughs>